I'm live, finally. Th thanks, YouTube. Hello, everyone. I'm Santiago Santiago, and today I'm gonna be live streaming the PS5 reveal on my 1650 Super. That's the PC <laughs> playing the video, doesn't matter. Yeah, guys, how are you doing? Good to see you. Whoa, it's making noise. Okay. YouTube sent me an email saying, hey, you're live streaming. No, no way. I didn't know that. I'm going to now share on the social media thing that I'm streaming. That's what I usually have to do. So one second, guys, I forgot to do it. In the meantime, I'll try to read the chat and interact a little bit because we still have like 20 minutes before it starts. So let's share it on Twitter, on the YouTube community, if anybody cares about that. <laughs> Hello, guys. ¿Cómo están? ¿Todo bien? I'm going to speak English most of the time, but uh, if I speak Spanish, just wait a couple of seconds and I'm going to switch to English eventually. Just don't be afraid to listen to my Spanish. Vaya, yeah. estaba diciendo en inglés que la mayoría del stream va a ser en inglés, pero si escriben en español voy a responder en español. Es una ida y vuelta que voy a tener ahí, <laughs> así que sean pacientes. Voy a tratar de hablar los dos idiomas, pero va a ser más inglés. All right, so I'm back. Let's go back to the live stream. There we go. So yeah, what I was saying is that we still have like 20 minutes left. So in the meantime, I will read the chat. So I'm going to talk to you guys in the meantime. What are your expectations? Any, I don't know, anything? I hope it costs like between the series x and the series s but really what i care about looking at this is what the target frame rate will be the target resolution what are the expectations in that side probably developers are going to be talking about this we are going to see new games hopefully something like that what i still want to Want to happen from this is that Nvidia and AMD start making affordable GPUs so we can have cheap ray tracing and cheap DLSS. That's basically what I want to get from this. Just some noise on the console side so the PC side gets more affordable stuff. That's really my my interest in this. I'm not really I'm probably not going to buy one. Maybe yeah, maybe not. But um, I'm interested in PC. But yeah, that's why I'm excited about this. Makes PC go further, so we compete. But yeah. ¿Cuál será mejor, la nueva Play o la Xbox? Ya nos vamos a enterar. Yo calculo que estará en el medio. What is the most powerful video card? My, oh, my most powerful video card. Um, at the moment, the RX 580 and the 1650 Super. So yeah, it depends on the game. Usually those are the two most powerful I have at the moment. I don't think I need something more powerful to make my videos and to show to you guys. I think the 1660 Super was a little too much for the channel. So yeah, those are the most powerful I have. Someone said in Spanish, hey, I want the live stream to start with GTA 5 remastered for PS5. Yeah, totally. We're totally going to see GTA 5 because the GTA Online portion is going to be free for PS5 owners, as far as I know. So yeah, we already had it for free on PC with the single player, so we <laughs> we won on the PC side. Hopefully it's just a patch for the PC players and we don't have to pay for GTA 5 again to get the next gen version. But yeah. Hola Juan, ¿cómo andas? ¿Es cierto que Spider-Man PS5 irá a 30 FPS? Dijeron que iba a tener un modo de 60, me parece, pero ya nos vamos a enterar. Sí, es español, soy de Uruguay. En realidad inglés es mi segundo idioma. What's your opinion on the new RTX 30, 30? 300, 3000 series? Well, my thoughts are that we need a 3050 or something like that. So we can have a cheap graphics card that can do DLSS. So we don't have to, I mean, ray tracing, I don't really care too much about that in, in this price point. 
but if we can get DLSS, it will be much easier to get a more demanding game to run at, I don't know, 720p upscale to 1080p with the DLSS method. I think that will be the key for us in this generation to have a graphics card that, that can do the upscaling with the more demanding games. So yeah, I think it will be very exciting. Other than that, I think that the pricing of the 3070 is pretty, is pretty good considering the performance they are saying it has. So yeah, I think it's good competition. Hopefully AMD has something to compete so we can have a good affordable graphics cards. But yeah, I think it's a good move by Nvidia, but we need to see the budget, the $200 GPU and the $150, that's still missing. But I think depending on what the consoles do, we are going to see better or worse cards in that range. Just remember the 750 Ti came when the PS4 was around. So I think it was a direct response to that. I want to see the 750 Ti of this generation. That would be very cool. So yeah, those are my thoughts, basically. Do you think a capture card is necessary or we can stream without it? You can stream without it, but the best thing about the capture card is that if you want to capture a console or a separate PC, it's basically a requirement. If you want the capture card to record the same PC you are streaming from, I don't think it's necessary because you have screen capture software. And AMD and Nvidia have very good software that can do that with the GPU. But the games, the games will have a performance impact. So if you want to avoid the performance impact, you need a capture card and a separate PC, which is what I'm doing right now. But yeah, it's more expensive. But you don't need a capture card if you're using the same computer. Yeah, the 750 Ti is still the best card. Yeah, it, <laughs> I mean, considering the price I got it at in 2014, it lasts quite a while. It's 2020 and can still launch all the games, basically except in that stranding so yeah oh i thought it started it didn't okay we still have 15 minutes to go so yeah i'm a legend oh thanks thanks i don't think the same but i appreciate that <laughs> are you buying the ps5 at the moment i have no plans on buying either a ps5 or an xbox series x maybe one day i might do comparisons with pc if there's something comparable in price but at the moment, I don't think I will, because I don't really enjoy playing by myself that much. I'm usually, I mean, I play so many games on PC that playing games feels like I'm doing YouTube, which is kind of weird. I'm in a weird position where playing games feels like I'm working. So I usually play on the Nintendo Switch. I have a Nintendo Switch Lite. And I've been playing Skyrim on the go. I go to a cafe and <laughs> drink coffee and play some Switch. So yeah, I've been playing Skyrim. And that's basically how I manage to have fun without feeling like I'm working. Which is, I know it's weird, it's weird. But that happens when you are doing games 24-7 for YouTube and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, at the moment, no plans to buy uh, one of the new consoles. RX 6500 XT equals 5700 XT. I don't know, I didn't even uh, heard about the 6000 series from AMD, but if that's the case, I mean, that would be amazing. If you have it at $200, it would be awesome. But we have to wait and see. Very Hispanic of you. Yeah, basically. Toda la serie 2000 se está liquidando con la nada. Sí, bueno, lo que está bueno es que van a ser fáciles de comprar las series 2000 cuando llegue la serie 3000. Something I said in just in Spanish just a second ago, someone said that, hey, the 2000 series of graphics cards is now dead. Well, just see it on the bright side. You can get it, you probably be getting a 2060 very cheap, 2060 Super as well, because people are going to probably jump on the 3060 if it's much faster. So yeah, the used market will be flooded with 20 series cards. So you're getting, you're getting them for cheap. Um, if the price point is lower than it was on release, I think it's a win-win situation. If you don't want to pay for the... Um, sorry about that, guys. Going to mute my phone. All right. So as I was saying... Um, oh, man, I got lost. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, ah, yeah, I remember. The, now the 20 series has the correct pricing basically 
you can buy it at a cheaper price and get good performance anyways and DLSS. So yeah, I think it's a win-win situation so far. They're not making them anymore, so <laughs> they're going to be sold very fast. ¿Dónde aprendiste inglés y en cuánto tiempo? Y arranqué cuando tenía cuatro años, de exámenes internacionales y después seguí por mi cuenta. Te aseguro que seguir por tu cuenta y vivir en inglés, básicamente, es, la, es lo que hace la gran diferencia. I was talking to someone in Spanish, saying why, how long it took me to learn English. Well, it took a while. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, as long as you work on it every day, it should be very easy to get a grasp from. What is mean, Santiago? It's my name. Juego Adventure Capillaries. Sí, bueno, es lo que está haciendo Sony. Do you work outside of YouTube? No, at the moment, no. At the moment, I'm doing YouTube as a... It's like a full-time thing, but it, it's not enough to live on my own because I live with my family. So I'm able to do YouTube, pay some of the internet bills, the, the graphics cards, the games. So it's basically a hobby that pays itself and it, it allows me to pay for studying so I can get to, um, maybe I can get a degree in the future, um, paid with some of the YouTube money. But in general, it's like a hobby that pay, pays itself, basically. That's what I'm at right now. So yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Uruguay. Soy de Uruguay. <laughs> People are selling their $1,200 2080 Ti's for 500. Makes me laugh every time. <laughs> well, take the advantage and buy the 2080 Ti for 500. I mean, that's a great deal. Why don't you start a tech channel? Well, I don't have, in my country it's very difficult to get hardware at a good price and due to the customs situation, if I get s sent something from NVIDIA or AMD or any company that wants to send tech, I have to pay 60% the value of, some of the object that was sent to me. So it's not really doable in my country to be a tech channel. So yeah, I wanted to do that for a while, but in this country it's very difficult. Maybe in the future if YouTube is doing better. But at the moment is very, very far, very far away. If that happens, it will be like maybe a decade in the future. Hey Santiago, hello from India. And I just want to ask you, what do you think of all the Ampere cards with RTX DLSS like the sub 300? Well, I talked about that a few minutes ago. If we can have a $200 or sub $200 graphics card that can do DLSS, it will be, it will be great. I mean, that will be <laughs> the best way to compete with the PS5, I think, and the Xbox Series X. It won't be 4K, but not everyone wants 4K. Personally speaking, I think 1080p or even 1440p is more than enough. As long as you have a good anti-aliasing solution, maybe some clean TAA. Clean TAA, I mean in the games that it's done right. When TAA is a blurry mess, I don't want to know anything about it. But if we, ha but if we can have TAA plus DLSS, I think it will be a good trade-off. It will look good and perform fine. So that's my thoughts on the, on the future, basically. ¿Qué es que renueva la 1030 en esta generación? Y nunca se sabe. Todo depende de las consolas ahora. For case kind of unnecessary, well, think about it this way. I have a monitor, well, a 21-inch monitor in front of me, and I have the live stream in a 4K monitor. Unfortunately, the live stream is only 1080p, but um, this 4K monitor is only 28 inches. In order for me to tell the difference between 1440p and 4K, I have to be less than a half an arm from the screen, which is ridiculous already. I mean, the DPI is amazing, The, um, or PPI, I don't know. DPI, I mean, <laughs> it looks amazing at 4K. Yeah, don't get me wrong. But at 1440p, it already looks amazing in a 28-inch display. So if you're doing 4K, maybe a television, 32 inches um, further. But at that point, once again, we get to the same discussion. If you have a TV, you're not looking at it from arm's distance. You're usually in a couch, a little far away, so you're not going to tell the difference between 4K and 1440p. It will be, it will be very hard, I think, personally, personally speaking. So I think that 1440p should be the sweet spot for all of us. 
and if we have 1440p in general 1080p will be very easy so if you have a 1080p display win-win situation no bottleneck gpu not cpu well in general now that we have ray tracing gpu is going to be the bottleneck cpus are getting much better thanks amd with the ryzen thing now we have way way faster cpus and they are much more affordable i mean quad cores and exa core cpus are super affordable so what else do you need <laughs> what are your thoughts on nvidia claiming 3070 to be faster than 2080 ti i mean they didn't specify exactly it could mean faster than 2080 ti with dlss it could mean it could mean anything because they the measurement they are using is not being communicated to us <laughs> they're saying yeah it's faster than 2080 ti well maybe on rtx maybe it has better rtx performance but on rasterizing maybe it's not faster who knows i mean but the specs are very good on the 3070 so i think they're being honest but uh, we have to wait for the reviews as usual as long as we have reviews from many sources i think they will tell the truth for all of us compras partes desde internet, no temes que alguna pieza venga defectuosa, en general trato de comprar cosas que sé que es poco probable que fallen, como procesadores. Placas de video no he tenido problema, pero me da un poco de miedito, sí, <ríe> a veces. Remember, we wait for the reviews and never pre-order. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the only way I have to, the only way, the only reason I have to pre-order personally if I, is if I want to review something. For example, on Friday we're going to get Crisis Remastered, I'm going to stream it live, so don't miss it. <laughs> but um, I'm going to pre-order it if I don't get a review copy because I'm going to cover it. But if you're if you are not going to cover it for our YouTube channel or something like that, I mean you miss nothing by not pre-ordering. In general, you miss nothing. Maybe a pre-order bonus, but pre-order bonuses. I mean you can usually live without them. Okay, stay tuned, it says there. So, four minutes to go. Yeah. So, once it starts, I'll put the volume again. There's no volume on the live stream because there's music. I don't want to be copyrighted. Where's the glasses? The glasses are in a case. I'm getting dizzy for using glasses on, while using the PC. So, I'm going to talk to my doctor to see if I have to change them. I have no problems with my eyesight. But I use them to to have less of a strain on my eyes due to the all the hours of screen time. So yeah, I'm going to talk to my doctor and see if we can adjust them a little bit because I was getting dizzy just using them. So yeah. So at the moment no glasses, but they will be back soon. Don't worry. They don't send you guys a free one to review. Uh, what do you mean, games? No, games in general. It depends. I usually request games. But I don't always get them, which is fine. I mean, nobody is... Um, I'm not forcing anybody to send me anything. But consoles and hardware in general is not something that I get sent. I think I need to be a bigger YouTuber to get that. But in my country, due to the customs and all that, it's very difficult to get um, hardware inside my country without paying huge taxes. So yeah, I don't get sent hardware in general. Yeah, I mean, 3050 should be 2060. Yeah, I think that's a good expectation. Maybe we're getting a 4 gig card. Personally, I think that the minimum this generation should be 6 gigabytes. If we can have a 3050 RTX, 3050, 6 gigabytes of video memory and um, 2060 performance, I think it will be great. I mean, that's what I'm expecting, actually. But at the same time, I think in, I'm thinking AMD. What? How is AMD going to respond to that? Are we getting he, um, much better rasterizing performance? What about ray tracing on AMD? How does that work? I mean, I'm thinking about all those things, and I'm just so excited. It's such a good time to be a PC gamer and a console gamer, a gamer in general. So many options. But yeah, it's very exciting. I think. Yeah, if the 30, if what I said about the 3050 is true, it will be amazing. It will be great. I mean, 1080p will be super affordable to everyone. Console have a higher tax where I live, 55%. Well, in my country, it's basically the same. So, I mean, I'm not surprised. 
PC components have 13%. Well, in my country, PC components are over 25% more expensive. So, I mean, I think is yeah, that's one of the reasons I choose PC. And one other reason I choose PC is because if I go to Steam or whatever, I mean, I don't have to get permission from anyone to get um, an upgrade on games. What I mean is I don't have to wait for, I don't know, my favorite game to be remastered. I can play it at a higher resolution at any time that I want when, I'm, when I upgrade my computer. I mean, just look at this. If you go here, what's the name of this? Home. Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, look at all these games in the side. Sorry, there are more. There are like 500 games here on Steam. So if I upgrade my PC with a new graphics card, I don't need to wait to, for anyone to upgrade the game so I can play it. I can just launch it, maybe use some mods to improve the experience. And that will be about it. That's what I love about PC. I can do whatever I want with my, with my software and hardware. And I don't have to wait for the big company to decide. So, I mean, if Sony said, hey, maybe there won't be, well, there, there's no PS3 backs, backwards compatibility. On PC, there's no problem. You can just open Steam, download the game, and you can play it at a higher resolution. If there's some smart guy on the internet that makes a mod to use ray tracing on a, an older game, you can also do that. I mean, that's what I like about PC, those options, and the, and the way that I can take my whole game library and play it whenever I want, in whatever hardware I have. So yeah, that's basically my, <laughs> my rant about PC gaming and console gaming. Ah, yeah, ahí va, ahí va, como dice Andrés, la PC es la más democrática. PC is the most democratic. Okay, it's going to start. Let me know if the volume is too low or too high. So yeah, here it goes. All right. Okay, the Capcom game. Each time Horizon 2. This planet seems somehow different. Okay. Yeah, the money community is amazing on PC. So many new Japanese games as well. Yet you do not fully understand it. Watch dogs. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Return, Horizon. I hope that games one day come to PC. Horizon 2. So many things at the same time, Jesus. These are all things we knew were coming. So, okay, nice presentation. Oh yeah, I'm free multiplayer on PC. Also, very important. ¿Qué piensas de Shade? Qué está interesante. Following content is captured on PC, emulating the PS5 experience. Okay, they're showing PC. <laughs> Wonderful. I cannot believe the first thing that they show is running on a PC. Final Fantasy. You all know the target. Shiva's dominant. Well, it looks amazing. The dominant. How do we even know the girl will be among us? Our kind do not question orders. We follow them. Hopefully this is actual gameplay. Not really. <laughs> okay, Square Enix. Sergeant, so, a new Final Fantasy game. Maybe. I can't. That a bloody mountain. Probably not. you buy the PS5? At the moment, no plans to do so. Our foe will not relinquish their mother crystal easily. <laughs> okay, this that dog didn't look fight. very good. <laughs> we are dubbing. We should not be out of doors. We have discussed this. Come, Joshua. Your father will be expecting us. I am Joshua's shield. I'm sworn to protect him. Yeah, this is definitely Final Fantasy. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Hopefully, it's more interesting than Final Fantasy 15. PS3 graphics? Well, not really. I mean, the hair. I don't really like how the hair looks on the characters. 
It's a, they are a little robotic, <laughs> but the combat look good. And some of these things really look like cinematics, especially the big battle there. But yeah, the effects so far when the fighting happens look pretty good, especially the metal surfaces. But I mean, it's a 1080p live stream. There's a lot of compression here. That really is really disappointing. I wish we had a 4K live stream option. There's not a lot that I can see due to the compression. Yeah, I mean, oh, maybe 60 frames per second, yeah. I don't know about that. Oh yeah, the BFX looks pretty good. I think that's the strong part about this one. The special effects, the particles. Then the characters look a little bit bland, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny that they started the thing with a Final Fantasy game running on PC, emulating the PS5 experience. <laughs> They're presenting a console talking about the PC legacy first. Of crystals. The Legacy of Crystals, okay. So it's not Final Fantasy, it's just it's our history. a new name. Any info of frame rate? Yeah, that was on Xbox. 120 frames on some Xbox games, up to 120. We'll see. See, so do the way. Las preguntas de PC las respondo en comentarios. Así que comentar un video y te respondo un rato. Cuando era por turnos, estoy de acuerdo. Oh yeah, this looks so much like Final Fantasy 15 ish. In a way. Okay, Final Fantasy 16. Okay, makes complete sense now. <laughs> Excellent. PlayStation console exclusive. So it's also coming to PC. I love that they clarified that now. It's also coming to PC. Great. Awesome. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Not because of Final Fantasy, but because they're telling us that it will also come to PC. But too bad for Xbox people. I mean, for PC that's great, in a way, because you don't actually need an Xbox or a PS5 if you want to play Final Fantasy. You can just get a PC, you play all the Xbox stuff, that's, that's what's really... Okay, let me... Okay, all the cinematics and gameplay are captured from the PS5 from now on. Okay, got it. So that was the only title that said I was running on a PC. Oh, the new Spider-Man game. I played the first one on PS4, it was amazing, one of my favorite games, so hopefully this is more of that, but I want a 60 frames per second mode. But the game was in 30 frames per second, well the, the live stream is 30 frames per second so we cannot tell really the performance, so that's kind of a bummer, in my opinion. Sí, no entiendo Xbox porque PC tiene como todas las cosas. Ah, uh, it will be so great to go through New York while it's snowing on a Spider-Man game. That will be so weird. Considering the other game was always sunny or raining or nighttime. Okay, let's see. Screen space reflections or ray tracing? Let's find out. I think it's screen space. Yeah. Yeah, looks very screen space to me. Yeah, it's been a while. Or not. I'm not sure. Okay, some characters do not have reflections. What do you think about Rio Morales? You gonna vote for okay, so that's probably not... Still hard to think of yeah, it's politician. not ray traced, I think. Maybe the, maybe the, static, sets, right? the static things are ray traced, but the characters are not. Sure because some people has reflections, but some people didn't have any. Maybe it's a compression. But yeah. Hi, I'm Brian Horton, yeah, maybe a combination of screen space and ray trace. I don't know. Are you sure livestream is just 30? Yes, it is. I'm 100% sure, yeah. Let me show you. As you can see, it's only 1080p. So yeah. That's pretty unfortunate. But it, it is what it is. We're probably going to get a 4K version. 
of this live stream eventually. Yeah, the, the reflection disappeared, but some things did not, so maybe it's cube maps mixed with ray trace, mixed with screen space. But yeah. yeah, it seems to be screen space. Maybe some things are ray traced. It's always a combination. So. Let's see, this looks interesting. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Seems to have no relation with the previous game. That looks cool, not gonna lie. As a Spider-Man fan, this is amazing. Same, Patrick. Same. Show me gameplay. More gameplay, please. That's Revan. Oh, Raven. Raven? Raven? What? In a Spider-Man game? <laughs> Maybe I read that wrong. I was looking through my sub list and saw you live. I used to watch all your 750 Ti videos. Oh, thanks. Okay, finally some gameplay. A lot of particles. Looks great. Well, this is one of the reasons I would buy a PS5. Because I played the previous one. And I really enjoyed it. It seems much more fluid than the previous one. If there's a 60 frames per second mode, it would be very interesting, considering everything that's going on on the screen with the particles. I mean, it feels like a game that asks us for 60 frames. And I say that because the previous game at 30 frames felt the bird's move. So if you can get that at 60, it will be great. Revan from Star Wars? <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm not a Star Wars guy. Si, el juego se ve fácil, pero el otro, el primero tenía bastantes opciones. No era tan fácil. Alright. This feels, this reminds me so much of the Avengers game, the first level. <laughs> Just much more interactive. I think. Oh yeah, this looks great so far. Okay, this is actual gameplay. That's great. Finally, not only a quick time event, you just aim and shoot. This is more scripted though, but I don't mind scripted stuff if it's interesting. There was at least a little interactiv interactability between the cutscenes. Not just press X to win. It needs 60 frames like DMC. Yeah, true. I mean, the combat feels so much like in the first game. Like DMC. About the... Um, uh, without the guns. You had a lot of options. Especially on the... Um, closer to the end of the game. That you had a lot of gadgets. I mean, it feels like it was made with 60 frames in mind. The first game. It would be amazing if we had it on PC, but very unlikely. That would be great. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, surely the <laughs> the bridge will be okay. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on now. I don't see any interactivity at all. Okay. Capture on PS5. Hopefully we, hit it. we have a 60 frames mode, but very excited for this one. This is one of the games I will buy the console for, but I won't buy a console for just one game, honestly.
Oh yeah, that looked amazing. As a Spider-Man fan, well done. <laughs> What's your opinion on Sony releasing more exclusives on PC? I think that's great. That means that we're getting more great games on PC. And we don't depend on a big corporation. Well, we depend on Steam and Epic and Microsoft, but <laughs> it's not as much of a monopoly. Okay, uh, Warner Bros. games. Oh, the Harry Potter game that was leaked. The Harry Potter open world game. If that's the case, Magic, oh man. Both beautiful and powerful yeah. Binds together our Please tell me this is an open world Harry Potter game. I wanted this across my childhood. Is this is what's my dream. Of Hogwarts. All right. Looking good. Please show me gameplay, please. These Late 1800s. And quite possibly shape the future I wonder how much Sony and Microsoft write to Rockstar for GTA 6. <laughs> Five minutes of pre-orders. Oh man, this Every looks good. Portrait. Please show gameplay. This looks in-game though. It doesn't look breathtaking. Looks good. So this feels like a realistic expectation. Feels like a, a modern game. So yeah, it doesn't feel like they're over-promising graphically speaking. But they're going for not a realistic vibe. Feels more like a realistic mix with some cartoony thing thanks fortnite for all the cartoony stuff on games oh yeah it looks good not mind-blowing but if it's open world it will be interesting okay that looked even better that felt like monster hunter okay i'm in <laughs> when tell me when Harry Potter sin Harry Potter, básicamente. Someone said in Spanish, this is Harry Potter without Harry Potter. Which I'm, fi I'm fine with that. As long as I can make my own character and do whatever I want with my powers. I'm in. But yeah, it looks good. What I really like about this is that they are not over-promising with the graphics. So far, it feels very realistic to something that would exist. This is clearly just a cinematic, this part. Okay. Hogwarts Legacy. Okay, 2021. Well, we are on September, so 2021 is not that far away. But yeah, that looked good. But I needed some gameplay. It feels like a third person shooty shooty. RPG stuff. Not bad. Looked interesting. This will be so nostalgic. Yeah, true. I mean, Harry Potter is my Hi childhood. Everyone. I'm Dan Vondrak, creative director at Raven, Raven Software. Okay, One Call of, of Duty. One of our goals as developers is to bring the game world to life unlike anything Let's you've see. ever experienced. Let's see, RTX features on PS5. Is making that happen. With the power of the new console, we've been able to significantly enhance the overall experience. From what you see in the world, how it feels Probably in your hands, some to what shadows you hear and screen space. In Black Ops I'm Cold War, you will be transported to the year 1981. With ray tracing. In the middle of one of the most dangerous times the world has ever known, the yeah, height yeah, yeah. of the Cold War. The yeah. following Another is a portion of, of the first campaign mission, where you've been given the name of a high-value target linked to the Iran hostage crisis. Okay, more gameplay on but Call of Duty. But in true Black Ops Good. style, nothing is as it seems. Take a look. It looks very decent. Let's see Call of Duty. I'm very excited for this one because I love the Black Ops 1. So yeah, I mean, this is like a sequel of Dark oh, Dark Souls, of Black Ops 1. So I'm very excited for this one, just for the campaign. I don't really care about the multiplayer that much. This is the first mission, so... What I think that they added here on the consoles is the ray tracing stuff, which will be the shading, the shadows, sorry. Just up ahead. And um, Let's go find this I'm into occlusion. I don't expect ray trace reflections or anything like that. Probably right shadows like on about. Modern Warfare on PC. On. So yeah, let's watch this. Okay. This live stream doesn't look so good. There's so much on the screen that um, there's compression, compression artifacts all over the screen. So 
people on Sony, people that are showing games, please do live streams at 4K. I can do live streams at 4K in my house. Do it for this, please. We need details. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but you cannot see the details, man. They are important. <laughs> yeah, Black Ops 2 is a sequel to Black Ops 1, but this is more of a direct sequel in the, in the means that it's more similar to the first game. It's not going all futuristic, which is I think is a good thing. More Cold War, please. Less exoskeletons. Yeah, graphics always look better at night. Okay. <laughs> They got him. <laughs> but yeah, at night and with rain and heavy reflections everywhere, usually looks much better. So I understand why they're showing this and not a daytime thing. But yeah, let's see what they're doing. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> that shot with the. Seeing the bullet looks very strange. Okay, body shield. Okay, that is interesting. New mechanic for Call of Duty. That reminds me so much of Far Cry that you can grab someone and then toss it to somebody else with a grenade attached. Whoa, that's so brutal. Love it. Yeah, that looks like the Far Cry 3 takedowns, but on a Call of Duty game. Yeah, that was a rip out on Sniper Elite, but Sniper Elite did it much better. I mean, the bullet had a lot of delay on that one. Not complaining. Let's see. Okay. Fair enough. RCXC. So, so many memories from the multiplayer. Seeing one on the campaign is kind of weird. Okay. To me, this doesn't look that interesting. Yeah, scripted as hell. Action set pieces from Call of Duty games, but that's why I play the Call of Duty campaigns, let's be honest. I'm looking for a fun story and some of the Holly set pieces. So yeah, you just play it once and discard it, basically. <laughs> the kill animations are so cool. Yeah, I really like those brutal kill animations. Sí, Sniper Elite tiene mejores cámaras de, de Sniper, por lejos. Más llevado. Oye, I love how brutal it is. <laughs> yeah, never part of the plan. Okay, in daytime it also looks decent, but they are just showing more nighttime stuff. Oh yeah, look good. Coming holiday 2020, yeah, we know. <laughs> we but hope yeah. you enjoyed that sneak peek at the campaign for Black Ops good. Cold War. There are many Interested more twists and turns campaign. along the way as you begin to unravel not so the much, truth, but the campaign looks good. Looks very decent. In addition to the story campaign, Cold War features the yeah, next the, the generation guns of multiplayer weren't online sounding so combat, interesting. That's true. I didn't and think about that. Awesome zombies experience. Although the Today, animations on the guns on look better on Modern Warfare, in my opinion, that the PlayStation the animations on that one previous Starting game this Friday, were better. Players will be able to the kill camps are better though, alpha exclusively on, on PlayStation 4. And for okay, those of you that are watching at home PS4. on your PS4, you can preload the experience later. starting I know tomorrow. That. We can't wait to see you online Friday On and PC we're going to have a beta a little bit later. I'm sure about that. And we're going to stream it and enjoy it. <laughs> no, that didn't look like a PS3 game. Not at all. I was in the PS3 generation. It didn't look anywhere near that. But the compression on the live stream is not doing it any favors. Which is unfortunate. Si, la guerra fría no era nada así. Pero bueno, vamos a divertirnos un poco. You don't wear glasses. No, I have to adjust them. I'm feeling a little... Probably a short guy like Salazar or Resident Evil 4. It reminds me of that. <laughs> but this guy smokes. Yeah, I, I'm probably going to watch people play Resident Evil 8 if it's too scary for me. Oh, okay, this is the, the Bethesda game. The I'm excited for this one. It reminds me of Wolfenstein. Sorry, Wolfenstein. You gotta learn how it works. 
see this is Black Reef is this is Death Loop, I think it's called and Death Loop. Is a different piece. It's from the people that made the sun art, I think from Arkane Studios. I am a respected scientist! I've done so many loops, oh yeah, this feels like an world actual world. gen actual gen game. Doesn't feel like something next generation. But I'm okay with that, as long as the game is fun. Oh yeah, this reminds me of Dishonored, but trying to have fun. So, like, maybe Doom mixed with Dishonored. If that's the case, I'm super excited for this. It looks like a lot of fun. So much freedom of movement. So yeah, looks looks very good. I'm excited for this one. I mean, it's not the best graphically speaking, but gameplay-wise, it looks very, very good. But there is never enough time. I go after yeah, one, like the scout on Team lives. Fortress 2, yeah. Because Feels right like now, that. <laughs> Mixed with Doom away, and Dishonored. The visionary is throwing his nightly cannibal masquerade. Alexis Dorsey. Everybody shut up! <laughs> Everybody shut up! <laughs> Igor's a big fan, yet somehow he never makes it to the party. Something keeps him... Ah, mañana es el evento Series X. Sí, sabe lo que voy a streamear entonces. Va a estar bueno. And here's why Igor blew it off. Do you guys like me talking about what I think about the, the games shown? Or just do you want me to comment about, I don't know, the numbers on the visuals? Um, I don't know, let me know, guys. Les iba a preguntar qué les parece que hable sobre qué me parecen los juegos que veo. ¿Les parece bien o prefieren que hable solo de cosas técnicas? O sea, díganme en los comentarios. Okay, you do like it? GTA 5.5? Okay, I'll comment on everything. Gotcha. Now I got a shot at killing them both at the same time. Es raro verme sin anteojos. Sí, lo pasa que los usé mucho. Sí, vivo en Uruguay. Everything. Okay. Personally speaking, I think this this looks great. Great in a, in a way that it feels like a lot of fun. Very fast paced. A lot of cool things that you can do with the powers. So yeah, as long as they can keep me entertained with the gameplay. Loop, death loop. I hope it's single player, not only multiplayer. <laughs> we'll see about that. Si, tal cual, la rompen mucho con el diseño. La arquitectura que tienen esos juegos es impresionante. Random question, what football team do you support? I, I'm not a fan of football or soccer, so I just support my country, Uruguay and Club Nacional de Fútbol, but just for the fun of it. And you just ran out of time. You keep forgetting Boom. Colt. I'm not like those other idiots. Only got one name on my list. Yours. Yeah, nothing with the names. I don't know if it's a multiplayer game or a single player game or a co-op thing. That's, that's what scares me about that game. I'm not sure if it's going to be a competitive shooter or a... PBE kind of thing or a mix. That's one of the things that really makes me doubt about how much I'm going to like it. But it looked interesting on the gameplay side. Very fast paced. Among Us correrá una RTX 3000? Mm, no creo. Capaz que Among Us 2 se queda corto. <laughs> sí, Wolfenstein con Dishonored. Okay. The new Capcom game that looked like that Stranding. That day. If our positions were I forgot the name of this one. What are fates? Okay, available digitally at launch on PS5. Oof, that scares me for the PS4 owners that want to play it again. Yeah, you can even see the reflections, yeah. I mean, they were showing off too many reflections. That's no coincidence. I know that. Because I do the same. When I'm showing off textures, I look at textures very close by. Okay, I don't know. Oddworld's Inhabitants. Okay, new Oddworld game, maybe, but in 3D. What are they doing? Did those fugitive morons burn this looks down so the weird. hideout? It sounds idiotic, but that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> Bad guama for burning down my farm. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. A new Oddworld game. Hi, I'm Lorne Lanning, creative okay, director yeah. <laughs> of Oddworld Soulstorm. 
We're excited to bring you an all new exclusive Okay, let's see what this is about. I only Here know the side scroll games, Abe so finds himself fresh off the back of we'll freeing see. his people from the nefarious. Let's Russia see what it's all about. He thinks the journey is over, but soon discovers it is only just sí, pero the pero stakes pero are pa. higher, the threats are larger. Beyond Good and Evil, no, no, this is Oddworld. And it's all made possible Beyond Good and Evil is from Ubisoft. PlayStation 5. Enjoy. Let's see what this is. from the previous games by expanding the the visual structure they're doing that perspective change and I don't know what's all about the other guys I don't know about that but yeah it looks interesting not usually my style but I might give it a try the closest to that I know is Crash Bandicoot <laughs> I know it's not the same but yeah it looks very faithful to the previous games yeah, odd world. What do you think about The Witcher 3? I love hey, The Witcher 3. One of my favorite games. I played too many hours. Over a, over a hundred, I think. Please come out. I don't know what this is. I wasn't paying attention. Gregory, I may have lost my temper earlier, but it was just a glitch. That floor looks it good. <laughs> Alright. It's been such a difficult day for is this cyberpunk? Why don't you cyberpunk 2077? No, maybe not. Maybe not. It won't happen again. Oh, no way. Five Nights at Freddy? <laughs> what? It was just a quick No way. What the hell? Gregory. <laughs> I would never have expected this. What the heck? I think she's found us. <laughs> So awkward. Yeah, the classic jump scare. <laughs> what the heck? Five Nights at Freddy's security breach. What is this? The least, the last thing I was expecting was Five Nights at Freddy's, um, and it says nothing about the game itself, which is unfortunate. But it looked very good. Very good visuals. No me la esperaba. No, yo tampoco. What the heck? Ray tracing jump scares. Yeah, finally. I can get scared in high resolution ray trace. Okay, PlayStation Studios. Let's see what this is. Oh, the. Um, Demon Souls. Demon's Souls. The remake. Very excited about this one. I never finished Demon's Souls. I've been playing it on RPCS3. And I played it on PS3. But this is looking amazing so far. I didn't like some of the bosses on this game, but I enjoyed it, the first levels I played. Oh man, I wish this one day comes to PC, it would be so cool. So do I. Remaster again, yeah, but this is, this feels more like a remake in a way that they are probably going to affect the gameplay. I mean, look at the difference graphically, it looks amazing. The compression is not doing any favors to it, but, I mean, it looks incredible. I mean, and the animation work is so much better than the original game. Oh man, this is another reason for me to get the, the PS5. This and Spider-Man. But this one, day, if this one day comes to PC, I mean, <laughs> my life is complete. Give me map support and... Yeah, I mean, look at the visual dif the visual difference is insane. And I already can see that the gameplay feels looks a lot different. So this is more of a remake than a remaster. If it was a remaster, they will just change the assets, but it feels like a completely different game. 
it doesn't look the exact same. And I played a lot of hours of the original one. Of course, they are doing a lot of theatrics with the gameplay, so it looks better than it is. But I mean, graphically speaking, it looks amazing. Esto es como un, este fue el primer Dark Souls antes que existiera Dark Souls, pero rehecho de cero con gráficos modernos. Y parece que tunearon el gameplay también. But yeah, I mean, the game, visually speaking, looks very good. I'm pretty impressed. And I'm a Souls-like fan, so this is right up my alley. Okay, th that guy didn't look so visually appealing. But I mean, I wish there was a 4K stream. This would look so good on a 4K stream. I'm missing so many details by looking at this 1080p 30 frames stream. I'm going to bring some water. Okay, I remember this. He killed me in two hits in the original game. <laughs> I also love that dust that goes from the ground that gets lightened by the I mean by the light from the top, from the roof. It just illuminates everything. I'm not sure if they are using the what's the name, the ray traced global illumination. But it does look very good. The spider oh man, that, that boss fight on the PS3. Oh this one was very easy on PS3, I remember that. Dragon, yeah. I died many times to the dragon in the original one. I never fight this one. But I mean, I consider this one a remake so far. I don't see this as a remaster. It feels like a completely different game. I mean, it looks like a completely different game. Hopefully, one day it comes to PC and we get mod support so we can play as, <laughs> as Havel. Oh yeah, Demon Souls. Looking forward to this one. Me pasa Skyrim 20 veces. Me irán a gustar los Dark Souls. Son bastante distintos. Son juegos que te castigan mucho. Pero si le agarras la mano al primer Dark Souls, te lo re recomiendo. Es una buena iniciación. Yeah, you will die a lot. Feels different though. It's not from some from software. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Fortnite. I I heard that buzz, so it's definitely Fortnite with ray tracing features because they announced the uh, ray tracing on the Nvidia 3000 series series series. <laughs> so yeah, probably going to add reflections to the PS5 version. Fair enough. Ray tracing on the PS5 version. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think let's see. Okay, coming to PS5. Nothing new. Probably going to add ray tracing to it. But yeah, no surprises. Obviously, Fortnite was coming on day one. <laughs> okay, PlayStation Plus Collection. Okay, the Game Pass competi competitor. I like that. Let's see. This is very important. Hopefully, they do something that benefits all of us. A new PlayStation Plus benefit for PlayStation 5. Okay, not for PlayStation 4, only PlayStation 5. Okay, Bloodborne, Monster Hunter World, God of War, Final Fantasy XV, oh man, Fallout 4, Mortal Kombat X, Uncharted 4, great games, Ratchet and Clank, I have to play this one, Days Gone, hopefully it's fixed now, <laughs> Until Dawn, I had a lot of fun playing that one on PS4, on a friend's house, My name is Marcus. Detroit My name is on PC runs like... Runs awful on PC. But it's a great game. Battlefield 1. Oh man, Battlefield 1 is so good. Even from the second sun, I finished that one. Yeah, these are all great stuff. Batman Arkham Knight. It was free on PC. The Last Guardian. Never played that one. Okay, what what about this? Are they giving them away? After the Last of Us time. Remastered. So these are all playable on PS5. Persona 5. You can play it on PC or not PCS3. Resident Evil 7. Okay. 
great game. Uncharted 4. Okay, they're just showing off the same games. So, is, still, is this a library for PlayStation Plus owners on PS5? Hmm. Alright. Okay, generation. Alright, so it goes. It goes from PS4 to PS5. Alright, gotcha. So there's a PlayStation Plus collection for PS5. So those PS4 games they showed are going to run on PS5 on day one, so you just download and start playing them. So yeah, this is the competition to Game Pass, which Game Pass has a lot more games across more platforms. But they are in this one, I think they are catching people with God of War, God of War, The Last of Us. Microsoft has all games that are on PC. So I understand what Sony is doing on this one with the PS Plus collection. They are showing some non-exclusive and exclusive games. There are less games than Game Pass, but you can only you can only play those on a Sony console like The Last of Us, God of War. So I think they are competing using exclusives on that one. So it will be interesting what people choose is a lot of games that are on PC as well on Xbox or less games but some of them are exclusive to PS5 and PS4. So yeah, it will be interesting. The thing is that PS Plus collection, they didn't say it was on PS4, they said it was on PS5. Pricing, do we get a price? $4.99 and ooh, and $3.99. Whoa! Okay, okay. November 19th. $4.99. This people right? $4.99 and 3 dollars Okay, let's write that down. So now you know. $4.99. Thank you all for joining us today. Okay, so $100 more expensive than the Series S, it's the cheapest one. Fans of gaming that drives and us the to same as the Series X. Of so I think that Microsoft five. will have problems. PlayStation, With the, that Game Pass competition, support. I think we that people will choose a PS5, having a PS5 on and PC. Very I, mean, soon. I see no to reason close, to have an Xbox if you have a PC and you get a PS5. I mean, you can get the exclusives on PS5. And on PC you get the rest of the stuff with Game Pass. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah. I mean, Sony, I think with the PlayStation Plus thing... Collection... They... Okay, a new God of War. <laughs> with exclusive on the, on the collection, with less games. They're going... I think they're going to win because of that. They have less games on that collection. But they are, some of them are exclusive. And on Xbox, you can play those on PC. Okay, a new God of War game. I never finished the first one, so. Let's see what this is. Okay, God of War Ragnarok, like it was leaked. It's coming. We're now, now going for more gods, 2021. Okay, who knows if, it, if that means summer 2021 or March so yeah sorry to say this but there is no reason sorry to Microsoft but from my point of view there is no reason to get an Xbox now I mean I understand the thing about Game Pass and all that good stuff but I mean you can get many of those games on PS5 and you get less games on the PlayStation collection thing but some of those games are exclusive and you cannot play them anywhere else. So with the exclusives, I think that Sony is going to... I think they nailed it with the price. I mean, you pay $100 more than an Xbox Series S and you get the same experience as the more expensive PS5. On the other hand, on the Microsoft side, the Xbox Series S, yeah, it's $299. It's $100 cheaper than the cheapest PS5. But it's less powerful than the Xbox Series X. So I think there's there's no reason, in my opinion, to get an Xbox if you have a PC. If you don't care about that, if you're, if you're not planning on getting a PC to play some of the competitive titles, I mean, you can get many of the games of the Xbox on the PS5. For a little bit more money, you get the same experience on the more expensive PS5 and on the more and on the cheaper one. 
And yeah, Game Pass is geographically limited. I mean, PS Plus as well is is limited, but you can select the, the what's the name of this? The region that you prefer, and it will work anyways. That's what I do in my country, <laughs> so you can make it work. But Sony is doing the less is more approach. They have the exclusive titles. They give you less games on the Game Pass thing they have. But they give you exclusive games, which you cannot play on PC, like The Last of Us, God of War, on the on that collection. And for that price, I think that there's honestly there's no reason to get an Xbox. The Series S and the Series X. Although some people told me that tomorrow there's a presentation about Series S and Series X, so we're going to watch that as well. That will be interesting. So we can discuss the pricing and what I think. So far, so far, for what I'm seeing with um, the pricing, I mean, the PS5 is the same price as the Series X, but has the exclusives. The PS4 without a disk drive, the PS4, the PS5 without a disk, 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 <laughs> a disk drive is not, is a hundred dollars more expensive than, um, than an Xbox Series S, but it runs the same as the other PS5, so you're not getting a performance a, perform a performance difference like on Series X and Series S. So yeah, I mean, I think that Sony won on this one. <laughs> we'll see tomorrow once Microsoft announces more stuff. But really, I mean, for this price point, I think it's very competitive. ¿Cuánto crees que costará en Uruguay? Probablemente 700 dólares en Uruguay. <laughs> Veremos. And also we have the exclusives. So let me see one thing before I keep talking. All right. This, this PlayStation Plus collection. This is very, very interesting. Very interesting. I wasn't expecting this from Sony. This is the Game Pass competition, but it says coming to PS5. It doesn't say it's on PS4. It says coming to PS5. So it's a subscription. It's not available in China. It says that it can vary from country to country. But we don't know if this is only PS Plus or if it's a separate thing from PS Plus. So not sure if this is um, the same as just paying PS Plus. That's what I'm saying. But you're getting some exclusive games from the PS4 era, such as The Last of Us Remastered. Um, you're getting also some of the EA titles like Battlefield 1 you also get God of War which is a huge game <laughs> you have Uncharted 4 Uncharted which one? I think The Lost Legacy was there as well not sure it also says that the game availability can vary from country to country so that's something to keep in mind but uh, yeah, it looks very interesting. I mean, they have way less games than Game Pass. They have this only on PS5, I think. Not sure if this is coming to PS4 as well. But on Xbox, you get way more games. Um, the console is cheaper if you get a Series S. And, um, well, a lot of games, but you can get those games on PC. So if you have a PC and you just get a PS5, you pay for Game Pass on PC, you play tons of games on PC without paying for those games and then on PS5 you can play the exclusives just by paying this subscription you get God of War, Uncharted, The Last of Us Remastered so honestly I don't see a reason to get a PS uh, sorry an Xbox Series S or Series X unless you use it as a I don't know a Fortnite machine <laughs> maybe if you want the best version of Fortnite on consoles without paying much, okay, you get a Series S. But I mean, with this, they're doing the less is more, basically. They're giving you less games, some that are not exclusive, but they're giving you exclusives as well. So, I mean, <laughs> this is the competition. You get Bloodborne as well. So you get Bloodborne, God of War, Monster Hunter World, Monster Hunter World is not exclusive, but I mean, they're giving you some multi-platform games to compensate for the amount of games on Game Pass. And at the same time, they're giving you exclusive games that are, are not on PC. 
So I think that is the, the reason. And the pricing, well, the pricing, <laughs> the pricing is great. I mean, considering the pricing on the Series S, I mean, just think about it this way. This, the PS5, this is the same console, but without a disk drive. On the Xbox Series X and Series S, the S doesn't have a disk drive, that's fine, but it's a less powerful console. This is the same experience, just without a disk drive. So you cannot compete with that. You pay $100 more than the Series S and you get the same experience as the, as the base console. I think that is what we have to take from that. I mean, it's, it will be the same experience, but without a disk drive. In my country, we do not buy physical ever. So nobody's going to buy this one, probably, in my country. So if you can spend a hundred more on a console, I mean, you're probably going to get the PS5 for the exclusives and a PC for the non-exclusive stuff. That is not a PS5, such as Microsoft games like Forza. So if you like Forza, you maybe just play it on a PC, it's very easy to run. And the rest of the games on PS5, who knows? So yeah, I think that with this price, with this price point, I think they can easily take on Xbox. And also they have the advantage that PS4 is the most, one of the most popular consoles this generation. It sold a lot more than Xbox. So they have that benefit that having a, already a lot of people with PS4s that already have The Last of Us, maybe want to play it upscale to 4K. So it's a very, very competitive price point, I have to say. I'm pretty impressed, honestly. And th this Game Pass com competition they're doing, it's, that's great. I love that. I love that both Xbox and PS5 are giving us subscriptions that allows us to download and play games. I mean, you don't, you don't have to buy individual games anymore if they are rotating games. So basically they forced Sony's hand to put a, a Game Pass thing. So everybody wins. Everybody wins. But yeah, $100 more for something that runs the same as the base console. I think, and with the exclusives on top of it, very difficult for Microsoft, I think. So yeah, personally, I, I think they convinced me to get the digital edition <laughs> because I want to play Bloodborne with a better frame rate. On PS4, it ran awful, sub 30 frames. Demon Souls, the remake, I really like that one. And I like the Spider-Man game. And I want to play The Last of Us Part 2. So I have four um, days gone. I have five reasons to get it, which are five games. Really, nothing. If, if I'm not sure if it's worth it. We'll see once I do the economics. But I have five reasons, and I'm a PC gamer. So PC gamer perspective. If you're only getting for exclusives for a whole generation, I'll just get a PS5 and upgrade my PC later on, basically. So I get the exclusives here. I don't even have to buy some of them. Some of them I'm, are in the PlayStation Plus subscription. So it's very difficult if you have a PC to justify getting an Xbox, honestly. With this price point, super difficult. But that's my opinion. What I think, um, well, I'm not sure if the digital edition has a 800 gigabyte SSD. So. I mean, if the hard drive size is the same, I mean, the Xbox Series S has a 500 gigabyte SSD. So for $100 more, apart from getting the same experience as the base console, you're getting the um, a bigger hard drive, a bigger hard drive, a, a bigger SSD. So you're getting more storage as well. So that's my question now. Does the digital edition and the PS5 have the same storage? I don't know, maybe. What's this video from Sony to the US? There was no FIFA. Yeah, no FIFA. True, true. But I mean, it was very interesting seeing the price point and, um, and um, what's the name of this? And the Game Pass competitor. I really like what they did there. I think they, I think they won <laughs> at the moment. Tomorrow we're going to watch the Xbox showcase so I can give you my opinion and we can compare the pricing, the performance, 
well, the performance. We don't know much about performance. Probably the PS5 is probably going to be less powerful than the Series X and closer to the Series S. But you get the exclusive games. You win with exclusives. You do not win with raw power only. Just remember this. The, the first Xbox was way more powerful than the PS2. And the PS2 is one of the biggest sellers ever. The PS2 was the less powerful console back then. So just let, let that sink in. It was against the GameCube and against the Xbox. And both of them were significantly more powerful than the PS2. And the PS2 won by a huge margin. So... I think they're playing with that, with less is more. Less is more in a way that we give you less games, but we give you our own games, our exclusive stuff. And well, if you want to play the Microsoft stuff, you get a PC, basically. <laughs> Just like it's been with Xbox One. Xbox One. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not sure how Microsoft is going to respond to this, but it's... Si, la que era débil, pero era más potente que el Play 2 igual. O sea... What about PS Now? Honestly, PS Now, I don't care about PS Now. It's a streaming service. It's not the same as playing locally. In my country, PS Now doesn't work well. And you need a, yeah, it's not good. I think that the streaming thing is a, a whole different level. The good thing with Xbox, if you care about streaming your games, streaming in a way that you're playing a, a stream version, is that you get the um, the Xbox version of the PS Now. I don't I don't remember the name. I think it was Project X Cloud. That's included with Game Pass, which is amazing. So if you pay for Game Pass, you can even play on your phone with X Cloud. But if you're not using the cloud service, it doesn't matter. You're going to play if you care about the exclusive games, it's over. I mean, if you got a PC, I see no reason to an Xbox at the moment. I mean, you can get a PS5 and at the end of the generation, get a faster GPU and, you, and you're done. I mean, there's no reason, which is strange. It will be, again, it will be interesting to see how Microsoft responds to this. Maybe they mix the subscription, the Game Pass subscription with Xbox Live Gold. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, maybe Microsoft can say, hey, online is free now. You don't have to play to pay to play online. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, had the, okay. So somebody's telling me that these two had the same specifications. The only difference is the disk drive. If that's the case, then no reason to get an Xbox personally. Okay, Game Pass is only on twelve countries. I don't know that. That's an important thing. But yeah, I uh, you cannot find anywhere if if it's the same hardware. Okay, okay. So. We're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's pretend, in the best case scenario, that they have the same hardware. They probably are. I mean, they have no reason to put a hundred dollars difference if the this console is a lot less powerful. Personally speaking, I think in that case it will be hard to compete, and they don't want to divide the player base. So, they probably have the same spec. If they didn't specify, I think that. They probably have the same. We're about to find out. But yeah. Okay, they definitely have the same hardware. Gotcha. Okay, so yeah, I think it's game over for Microsoft. They have to do something to respond. But it will take some time. At the moment, this is what I think. I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. I had a lot of fun looking at the PS5 and the games. Very excited to see how this generation starts. Hopefully this makes NVIDIA and AMD make affordable GPUs for us to get so we can play with DLSS and ray tracing on budgets, on small budgets. <laughs> but yeah, we are going to, what's the name of this, to end the live stream now. Tomorrow we're going to be watching the Xbox live stream if, if I can do it. If not, well, there's no live stream. But yeah, the plan is to do it. If there's no live, if there's no live stream for me, I'm sorry. I'm just, I don't know the time where it, when it starts, but I'll let you know in the social networks. Uh, but yeah, dice Nerwin que con el internet de tercer mundo más de 100 gigas la digital no es una opción tan viable. Sí, pero los juegos son mucho más baratos. La puedes dejar ahí descargando y te vas. En Uruguay no es el caso. En Uruguay tenemos re, el re internet, pero entiendo. 
someone was saying that the digital edition is in a third world country is not a great option because of the internet for and 100 plus gigabyte downloads well first of all you can leave it downloading and get away basically <laughs> and leave it downloading it will be cheaper in this country for example to get a digital version of of a game and also when you buy a physical game there will be updates anyways so the updates are going to be huge anyways so i don't think that's a huge thing you can i think that the price is right considering what we have in my country in particular the internet is great so <laughs> whatever but yeah i understand the point of view Sí, imagínense en Montevideo, la máxima descarga que podemos tener son 50 megabytes, 58 megabytes por segundo. Megabytes, son 500 megabits. Y la más lenta es 120 megabits. Así que imagínate. O sea, acá tenemos la resorte. Anyway, so thanks to Sahendra Malik for the 20 Indian rupees. Thank you so much for always being there. You've been here for a while, man. I, I remember your first comments in my channel. You, you've been with us for, from the start. <laughs> Thanks for supporting us, for supporting us, for supporting me, actually, <laughs> and making, doing this type of content more easily. So yeah, thank you so much for the donation, man, and all the extended support. Okay, there's no internet problem in India. Okay, but yeah, looks looks good. See you guys next time. Internet is only going to get better, I think. Let's see how Xbox responds and how Nvidia and AMD on the PC market responds. But yeah, see you guys next time and thanks for watching. Bye bye.